Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan and my credentials are I have 8 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations and internal security and also the analysis of the Hindu newspaper which will be very very useful for the prelims as well as mains examination. And this session or video is in regards to how to crack prelims and mains emphasizing on the keywords. I would be emphasizing on the keywords which are very very important for prelims and also emphasizing on the key phrases which will be very very important for prelims because while we are identifying the keywords and the key phrases I will definitely make it very clear that the factual and analytical questions we will be able to identify the factual and analytical questions. So these are the areas wherein you need to focus while reading the newspapers. It is very imperative that you identify the keywords and the key phrases from the keywords and the key phrases you have to be in a position I mean my lecture would be making you getting into that mode of strategic preparation wherein you will definitely go ahead with identifying the factual and analytical questions for the prelims as well as it will be useful for the when we are going ahead with the comprehensive anytime that would be in regards to the better and thorough understanding that is in regards to the descriptive so this will be useful for the answer writing so definitely it will be useful for the prelims as well as mains examinations so now i would get into the notification what you have that is let's crack upsc cac english which is india's largest learning platform and once you get subscribed to it you will have unlimited live and recorded courses access you will get it from the India's best educators. So along with this you have the other privileges that is in regards to you will have the daily live classes, live test and quizzes, structured courses and unlimited access to the live and recorded courses and these are the top educators at an academy which you can see it on your screen along with that these are also the top educators which you can also see it on your screen. And in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English, the courses offered by an academy are Economy, History, Current Affairs and various other courses which you can also see it on your screen. And in regards to once again the Let's Crack UPSC CS English, the courses offered are essay writing, practice and strategy, answer writing courses and others which you can also see it on your screen. And in regards to the Let's Crack UPSC CS English subscription, you have 12 month subscription and 24 month subscription. 12 month subscription the original amount is 40,000 and the 24 month subscription is 48,000. So it's always recommended that you go ahead with subscription for the 48,000 which is the original amount for 24 months and then in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English subscription you can use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 wherein you will get 10% discount and the discounted price would be 43,200. So it's always recommended to go ahead with 24 month subscription because you will be paying you in the sense the civil servant aspirants will be paying the amount only for 13 months but you will get the subscription for entire 24 month subscription because you will be paying for 12 months plus 1 month where in the 12 months the original price is 40,000 and for 1 month the original price is 8,000. So combined together 12 plus 1 13 months and then 40 plus 8. So you are paying the amount of only 13 months 48,000 but you are getting the entire 24 month subscription. So do take the advantage the privilege which has been offered by the an academy towards the civil servant aspirants. So go ahead with subscribing for 24 months and take the maximum benefit and then get into the mode of the civil services preparation which is required. The serious preparation is required for two years. So 24 month subscription is apt for your serious and solid preparation for UPSC to get along or to get through the prelims and mains and also the interview. And now you have also a an academy has launched the UPSC CAC in 10 minutes wherein it will be all the topics will be covered within less than 10 minutes and these sessions will be taken up by the educators in English and it will cover all the relevant topics which are useful for the UPSC CAC English and it will be explained in 10 minutes and all these topics will be crisp, concise and to the point. So make sure that you also go ahead with UPSC CAC English in 10 minutes which will be very very useful for you in regards to the civil services preparations which will be crisp, concise and to the point 
and today's topic what we will look at is the analysis of the Hindu newspaper and before I get into the analysis of the newspaper, Hindu newspaper I would say good morning or hi to everyone who is watching the uh, session that is uh, Sudarshan and then Malvika Sajivan and all others who are watching the my uh, session the newspaper analysis of the Hindu newspaper and today's uh, newspaper covers in the front page that is the Indian India's virus tally process 1 lakh 1 lakh and fatality counts to 3157 so this is the cause of concern the state health departments have put in the India's tally of over 1 lakh on March May 18 so this is the cause of concern because the the, the, the number of infections are definitely increasing a lot and that is the cause of concern and we also have some kind of respite that is almost 40,000 that is 39,217 have been recovered from the disease so this is a very good news but still the cases the infected cases are increasing uh, uh, day by day and it has crossed 1 lakh mark and Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat are the states which are having with the maximum uh, tally and the Maharashtra is topping the nation's tally that is with 35,000 and Tamil Nadu with 11,760 confirmed cases and Gujarat with 11,746 cases. So these are the states that is Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat are which are at the high ranking in regards to the infected cases uh, due to SARS-CoV-2 and the recovery rate we have also a recovery rate which is 38.29 percentage. So this is also a very good news that is the recovery rate is increasing I mean it is moving further to 38.29 percent so if we compare the India's population that is the 1.33 billion population and then if we look at the recovery rate and then the number of infected cases are comparatively low compared to the other countries but still we need to make sure that there are various I mean the test I mean we have to go ahead with more testing we have to go ahead with tracing, testing and treatment. So these three T's, three T's have to be into uh, action very seriously. That is how we can go ahead with tracing, testing and treatment can be given and then we can make sure that the recovered cases will be, will be very high compared to Tilly rather than 39,000 it would be more. So this is very important and the recovery rate is 38.29 percent that is in terms of confirmed cases per lakh population per lakh population they convert they, they consider and then they, they go ahead with the recovery rate of percentage that is 38.29 and when we look at the graph that is the chart when we look at India is the cases if we look at the new average new cases are 4077 and doubling time is 13.5 days so you have the recovery rate and you also have the doubling time so doubling time is increasing wherein 13.5 it's a good note and earlier I mean in the first uh, uh, first national lockdown or second national lockdown it was three days so now three to four days now it is increased to 13.5 days so definitely we are trying to contain the virus but still we have to go ahead with more rigorously the testing and make sure that the asymptomatic persons are not the actually persons who are trying to spread the virus so in regards to India it stands forth and when we look at just the other countries that is US the average new cases are 22,500 and Brazil which is also a developing country 11,197 and Russia 10,295 so if we look at the developing country like India also the Brazil is the one which is uh, having more spread of virus recently just a couple of days back if you look at Brazil Brazil is also going ahead with a lot of uh, new cases new cases and then if you look at Russia also which has started very late in regards to infection cases reporting but it has become the uh, now the uh, very uh, kind of epicenter now the spread of virus are going ahead lot infection cases are going ahead more in Russia so if you look at definitely India is at the doubling rate 13.5 which is very good very good in regards to but if you look at the other uh, countries that is UK which is doubling rate is 47.2 US even though it has the more number of death cases but the doubling time has come down and when we look at the other country that is which are more higher that is Iran 42.9 and Turkey is the highest that is the doubling that is 61.7 days it is 
the cases are doubling. So there they are trying to contain the virus. Canada again 43.7 and which is the least if you look at it is 10.8 days that is Chile. That is Chile. So if you look at this definitely you will get, get an idea about what how the virus is spreading across and what is the new cases in various countries and also the doubling time doubling time which is actually been tech, which is actually been in various countries and how they are able to contain the virus because they are able to contain the virus the doubling cases are comparatively less in various other countries especially if you look at uk us iran and then canada and then turkey is the highest that is 61.7 days time and you have the other news in regards to the Oxford vaccine fails. So there is a news which talks about the vaccine has been failed, which has been taken up by the Oxford University, which has been taken up by the Oxford University, which has been failed. To what they have come up with the uh, uh, testing in regards to the COVID-19 uh, uh, vaccine to be tested. It was a potential vaccine for COVID-19, but it has failed. And this was used to protect the vaccinated monkeys. So it has been used on the animals. The, uh, the trial, the phase uh, trial, it was used on the animal and that is on the monkeys and it has failed from being infected by the virus. So, they could not stop the monkeys uh, or the vaccine could not stop the uh, monkeys to be infected by the virus that is SARS-CoV-2. That is SARS-CoV-2. But the animals appear to be protected from pneumonia. So, definitely there is a sign that we can still work on the uh, the Oxford University can still work on the potential vaccine for the COVID-19 because it did not uh, stop or it did not uh, make sure that the virus is not infected but it has protected the monkeys from being infected from pneumonia. So that is very important and the vaccine is the CHAD CHAD OX1 Oxford and COVID-19 that is coronavirus 19. So this is the uh, vaccine candidate which can be used uh, which can be again asked in the prelims and this is being tested for what for common cold virus that is adenovirus this again very important for prelims point of view. So CHAD OX1 and COVID-19 vaccine candidate is tested for a common cold virus that is adenovirus that affects the chimpanzees. So it is being tested uh, by uh, to make sure that it will weaken or it will overcome the common cold that is adenovirus which affects the chimpanzees and uh, the candidate vaccine that is charged OX1 and CO2 CO19 also shows that there is performance in monkeys that is Resus macuf have prompted researchers to test vaccines potency so that means there is a, there is a potential that the strength or the effectiveness of the vaccine can be taken up in uh, making sure that the uh, the vaccine or the potential vaccine the trials can be taken up in a positive way and then it has ha also had Indian vaccine manufacturer in regards to Oxford University that is Pune based which is called as Serum Institute and this is again very important for brilliance point of view which is the Indian vaccine manufacturer which is having I mean a promise that it would announce uh, manufacturing of Four to five million doses is the Pune based Serum Institute, and it is one of the seven global institutions, and that will manufacture the vaccine developed by Oxford Vaccine Group. So this is very important for Prelims point of view, which is a manufacturing unit that uh, developed the vaccine by the Oxford Vaccine Group, or the Oxford University, or the Oxford uh, Vaccine. That is the Pune based. Uh, pharmaceutical uh, manufacturer that is Serum Institute. This is very important for prelims point of view. And this if you look at the uh, trial has been taken up in the phase 1 trial. This is the phase 1 trial. Please do understand. UPSC might question, might give a question in this regard too. And this is CHAD OX1 and CO19 which is against the SARS-CoV-2 but there was not positive impact on the monkeys in regards to stopping the virus of SARS-CoV-2 but it has impacted the monkeys in trying to protect the pneumonia trying to protect the pneumonia and this potential vaccine will be administered on the healthy volunteers after the animals now it will be on the healthy volunteers volunteers to study the safety and this uh, chimpanzee as we have looked at and what is the protein which binds that is the SARS 
uh, CoQ protein that is a spike protein which binds the human receptor and which is the human receptor that is ACE2 human receptor. This ACE2 is the human receptor and spike protein is the one uh, from the SARS-CoV-2 and this is from the human cell. This goes and binds. If this is a spike protein, so this is a human cell. This is the receptor, human receptor, human cell, and this is a spike protein. So this grows and then it binds with the it binds with the spike protein binds with the human uh, uh, cell that is human receptor that is ACE2. This is ACE2 human receptor. H2 human receptor. So this will bind. This will bind. Okay, I'll I'll put here once again. So this you can consider as this will be the spike protein which goes and then binds with the this is spike protein and this is H2 human receptor. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, Malika. Yes, I will, I will definitely. Next time, I will make sure. So, what is red? It's uh, coronavirus that makes the spike protein. What is missing there is the makes the spike protein. And here, the Serum Institute has committed 400 crore and expects to produce 10 million doses of the vaccine. 10 million doses of the vaccine. And this spike protein gets and binded uh, with the ACE2 receptor, with the ACE2 receptor. And by this, it uh, multiplies and then it infiltrates it gets into the lungs that it causes the it causes the uh, respiratory illness malvika uh, do you get it the last one is that the coronavirus that makes that makes the spike protein that makes the spike protein and here expects to produce 10 million doses of the vaccine 10 million doses of the vaccine And the other one is you have the news uh, in regards to the 83 LCA that is light combat aircraft MK1A deal as we is the high priority the IAF, IAF chief say that that is Indian Air Force uh, will set up a second squadron that is in regards to the light combat aircraft Tejas LCA Tejas will be set up a second squadron will be set up by the month end and another deal will be taking taking place taking place in another three months that is 83 uh, it will go ahead with the LCA light combat aircraft MK1H jets 83 number the deal will go ahead in another three months so what is important is LCA Tejas and then LCA MK1H jets so this will go ahead with the second squadron or second unit will start and then in regards to the MCA MK1A jets in another three months in another three months the entire uh, uh, deal will take place and this is going at because of the indigenous production. The, the government of India is very particular in regards to the indigenous production. And that is why the uh, IAF chief, that their chief says that there is a challenge for the domestic industry. Yes, definitely as part of the Make in India program, as part of the Make in India program, definitely India wanted to concentrate on the indigenous production. So definitely on the basis of the indigenous production, there would be a challenge for the domestic industry in regards to the LCA Tejas and then in regards to LCA uh, that is light combat aircraft MK1 A jet planes and this tender is for the 114 fighters which is uh, which will be built under the Make in India program Make in India initiative and this will be built in India and it will not be imported so definitely the the kind of uh, 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 very clear that Uh, Sri Hari S. Yes, Pillai has joined. Uh, I would say first, a very good morning to you, Sri Hari. Very good morning to you, Sri Hari. And in regards to your question, sir, will you do a course on science and technology in this platform? 
uh, what I would do is along with this uh, newspaper analysis, which is from uh, 7.30 in the morning till almost 8.30 and another session I have at 10.15. 10.15 a.m. to again 11.15, 11.30, uh, 11.30 it goes on. There I will take up the all the editorials and I mean which are the trending editorials and articles. So what are in regards to all the topics, it could be economy, it could be uh, in regards to the disaster management or science and technology or, or, or else in regards to uh, ecology and environment or in regards to welfare schemes. Whichever it covers the topics, I will take it. I will take it. I, I will cover those. So definitely SNT is also part of the editorial article. Whenever it comes up, I will definitely take up. So my sessions are 7.30 a.m. one and again 10.15 uh, a.m. once. Clearly, I will take up. Whichever are there, definitely I will take up. And Anshuman Hans uh, also has joined. Anshuman, a uh, very good morning to you. Hi to you also. Priyari, I think you have got the point. I will definitely take up. Science and technology in this platform, yes. And if you look at these are the two. The first one is in regards to the LCA MK1 A jet. The first one, this one, and this is LCA Tejas. So this I have taken it for uh, uh, in regards to the pictorial representation, which would be very very. Uh, clear that you will understand it better whenever you look at then you can link it to okay okay thank you so this is that 83 which will take place in another three months and this will very soon the second unit or second squadron will come up in Sulu in Sulu and there is one more news in regards to JNK notifies what does it notifies rules of it notifies the rules of Rules for others, rules for domicile certificates. So this is again could be very important for prelims point of view, from prelims point of view. So what are the uh, Jammu and Kashmir, the unit territory has come up with the rules for notifying the domicile certificates. Domicile is the one who is uh, part of the particular land, a particular state or particular unit territory or country. Domicile is the uh, born and brought up or there are few conditions also. So JNK administration has notified the grant of domicile as grant has notified the grant of domicile domicile or else I'll write grant of domicile certificate procedure rules 2020. So this again is very very important when I'm saying for prelims point of view. So it is the JNK has come up with the grant of domicile certificate procedure rules certificate procedure rule. what certificate procedure rules it is it is in regards to the domicile so it will grant the domicile certificate procedure rules of 2020 of 2020 and it will issue in a very strict manner the certificates which will be stipulated within the 15 days which will be stipulated within the 15 days and this under the amended rules the eligible non-locals can also apply so what is important in the amended rules is eligible non-locals this is the keyword why I am saying is again in the prelims there could be a question saying that which among the following statements are incorrect and here if it gives that under the amended rules the JNK administration has also uh, uh, allowed the eligible non-locals can also apply for the certificate. Instead of non-locals, if it is not mentioning this non, eligible locals can also apply for the certificate. Then it is incorrect. It is eligible non-locals. Please do understand. This is where we, I mean the civil servant aspirants tend to uh, get into that mode of uh, committing the mistakes. And UPS will definitely focus on these kind of very minute things wherein we, we tend to what you say uh, just overcome it so please do concentrate on this when i'm saying which among the following statement if a question is given which among the following statements are incorrect so nandini has also joined uh, very good morning to nandini also so it will be for the eligible non-locals and domicile certificates have been made basic eligibility condition for so why this domicile certificate basically this is again very important for prelims point of view because these are these domicile certificate are part of the eligible condition for appointment of any post for appointment of any post 
under the union territory that is jammu and kashmir so once the jammu and kashmir has uh, abrogation of article 370 on august 5th 2019 and then later on we have seen it has been as the, it has been uh, notified as a gem, uh, as a union territory and then later on the domicile was concerned so they have come up with the uh, eligibility criteria so this domicile certificate this domicile certificate is for what is it will be made as a basic eligibility condition for what for appointment for any post for appointment of any post in jnk in union territory jnk so what is the core that you need to look at it is that the grant of domicile certificate procedure rules 2020 basically is for providing a certificate domicile certificate to make sure that the individuals have that certificate and that will enact or act as a basic eligibility condition basic eligibility condition for what for appointment of any post in jammu and kashmir union territory and now we will look at what i mean who would be considered as the eligible locals or eligible non locals or who would be given the domicile certificate all permanent resident certificates holders so all the first one is in regards to the all permanent resident certificate holders will be granted and their children will be granted who are not just staying in jammu and kashmir but who are also staying outside jammu and kashmir can also apply for the certificate please do understand why i am saying again is i am reiterating once again that it could be which among the following statements are incorrect in regards to the grant of domicile certificate procedure rules 2020 please do understand for that sake i am repeating once again so all permanent resident certificate holders and the children who are not staying in jammu and kashmir but rather who are staying outside can also apply for the certificate and the second one is the kashmiri migrants the kashmiri migrants who are living in who are living in or outside first one is the permanent resident holders and the second one is and the permanent resident holders and the children and the children who are staying outside jammu and kashmir you will get it and the other one is kashmiri migrants living in or outside jammu and kashmir can also go ahead with applying for the domicile certificates by what by simply they have to produce when they are kashmiri migrants they have to produce the permanent resident certificate or ration card copy or voter card or any valid document so if they can produce this so definitely they can apply for the domicile certificate and the third one is the bonafide bona fide, bona fide migrants can also apply so what do you mean by bonafide bonafide means authentic or genuine migrants Kashmiri migrants are different. Bona fide migrants are also different. So this is what I am saying. It could be possible that which among the following questions are incorrect in regards to the grant of domicile certificate, domicile certificate procedure rules 2020, domicile certificate procedure rules 2020. So bona fide migrants can also apply with what with what with relief and rehabilitation department by providing what. by providing the electoral rolls of 1988 why i am emphasizing is again i am saying this year can be what you say changed in the statement of upsc in the prelims electoral roll of 1988 for whom for the bona fide migrants they can apply with the relief and rehabilitation department and along with the proof of registration and along with the proof of registration so these are, uh, are are the one who can go ahead with applying that is permanent resident holders and the children who are staying outside jammu and kashmir the kashmiri migrants who are staying in and outside by providing the uh, certificate that is permanent re resident certificate and also ration card and then voter card or valid any other valid document and the other one is the bona fide migrant also they can go ahead with applying with the relief and rehabilitation department by providing the electoral roll of 1988 this is important here here and also in regards to the providing the proof of registration and this applicants can be applied electronically and get certificate online so this is 
very important in regards to the prelims point of view and then there is another news in regards to what says is call for who probe into virus origin so we have seen yesterday that 73rd uh, session of who not who who 73rd session assembly or 73rd assembly has been taken uh, uh, has been conducted so india backed the draft resolution at the 73rd this is important for prelims point of view 73rd session <coughs> You can uh, just uh, uh, try to uh, remind by 73rd and 74th uh, uh, Constitution Amendment Acts or, or that uh, in regards to Municipal 73rd of the World Health Assembly received a big boost. Why? Because the African group of nations also have extended the support for the motion which which seeks what for what for what motion has been taken up for the global investigation in the spread of the novel coronavirus. So the draft resolution, the draft resolution talks about the global investigation in regards to the spread of novel coronavirus. So it is in regards to the global investigation. Please understand the draft resolution which has been come up in the WHA World Health Assembly at the 73rd Assembly uh, session. 73rd uh, session uh, assembly session which was actually india has backed it along with india the african group of nations also have backed the draft resolution so what is mentioned in the draft resolution that is in regards to the global investigation into the spread of novel coronavirus and this is very important why because india has backed it and it has got the backing even from the african group of nations and this assembly has been convened in Geneva prelims point of view again it has been conveyed in Geneva wherein it is the headquarters of the world health organizations and it declared that globally global body will look into the lessons of the COVID-19 pandemic not into the GI that is the global investigation the draft resolution also pulls, calls for so definitely the draft resolution which is in regards to the global investigation will focus on impartial independent and comprehensive evaluation so it will look into the or it will have the impartial independent and comprehensive impartial independent and comprehensive evaluation into the who coordinated international health response to the covid 19 and this 73rd who requests the director general to identify the zoonotic sources of the virus and the route of introduction to the human population so this is what the global investigation when this is a global investigation it is a draft resolution so the assembly is asking the director general is asking the director general of who tedros gabrosus that it has to look into or identify the zoonotic sources zoonotic in the sense the animal source wherein the virus is is the virus from the animals so identify they have to identify the zoonotic sources the first one and then they are asking about the route of introduction how the humans i mean first the uh, human being has been in the wuhan city has been infected by the sars cov 2 by the SARS CoV 2. So, definitely, what you need to get that what has been discussed is in the draft resolution, the global investigation, and that has asked the director general of the WHO, that is Tedros Gabrosis, to identify the zoonotic source of the virus, that is SARS CoV 2, and also to make sure that find out the root, root source and the root of root of the introduction to the human beings by the of the uh, uh, by infected by the SARS-CoV-2 and also they wanted the possible role of role of intermediate host so they are definitely going ahead with we can say that yes there is a global investigation global investigation look at this role of intermediate host so that means whether it was cultured in lab whether it was cultured in lab whether the SARS-CoV-2 was the 
lab cultured one is the question mark role of intermediate host and through effects of scientific and then collaborative information so definitely there is a target intervention that is research agenda in regards to the global investigation how this virus has actually spread and taiwan and look at this this is very important taiwan was a uh, usa is usa has uh, very seriously pushing for taiwan to be the taiwan to be the observer status observer status of who not who of who usa was pushing very hard for taiwan to have the observer status in the who in especially this 73rd session but Taiwan's protested at not receiving, so it could not receive any formal invite from the WHO Secretariat for the 73rd Assembly. And there is one more news in regards to the stimulus to cost only 1% GDP. So definitely, as our Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the 20 lakh crore economic stimulus package, it would be uh, would be close to 10% of the GDP, but there are different uh, estimates which have been done by UBS Securities, BOFA Securities, SBI, HSBC, IAFL, Edelweiss Securities, Nomura, CLSA and City. All these when they have done, when they have gone ahead with the estimates. So they have come up with the output or the study that the fiscal cost that is the fiscal burden. The fiscal cost that is the fiscal burden would be just close to 0.8 percentage to 1.8. So you can look at from the lowest the lowest is the 0.8 to 1.8 so the the percentage of the fiscal cost by the center uh, because of the economic stimulus package of 20 lakh crore would be just 0.8 to 1.2 percentage uh, close to about 1% of the gross gdp 1% of the gross gdp and this is by the estimate by all this and you have another news in regards to the 11 years on Tamil remembers the loved ones. So we look at who were the loved ones who, who were really missed, who have been missed 11 years back. So we can see the Tamils, I mean the families, the scores of families of Tamilians who have died in the final phase of Sri Lanka civil war. In the Sri Lanka civil war. They have paid tributes to the one who have been uh, who have died uh, in the in the final phase especially in the final phase of the sri lanka civil war in the, the final phase of the sri lanka civil war and it was on this day that is may 18 in 2009 2009 the armed forces they were very jubilant or they are tri triumphantly declared that they have uh, crushed the rebel ltt or they have won over the ltt that defeated the LTD and they have killed the leader that is V. Prabhakaran. So it was in May 8th, on May 18th in 2009 on this day that is almost 11 years back that is why the Tamilians are paying tribute to the one who have been died in the final phase of the Sri Lankan civil war and then UN has estimated almost 40,000 deaths which have been taken place in the final phase of the Sri Lankan civil war wherein they were I mean the uh, government the Sri Lankan army or the government were very particular to crush or defeat the LTT and then kill the leader that is Vel Velupilai Prabhakaran and during that phase almost 40,000 deaths have been taken place because of the incessant shelling <coughs> even though those areas were under no fire zone. The zones which were under no fire zone also there were incessant shelling and because of that 40,000 deaths have been taken place according to the UN estimates and the Tamils symbolizes its brutal end and brought much uh, grief and trauma. So this has brought in much grief and trauma to the Tamil community to the Tamil community that is why we have seen even after 11 years they have paid tributes to the one who have died in the final phase of the Sri Lankan civil war. And the Sri Lankan state has celebrated it as a victory day, as a victory day and hailing the soldiers as war heroes. So definitely the Tamil community has gone ahead with uh, paying tributes, <coughs> paying tributes to the one who have lost their lives, Tamil community and then in regards to the Sri Lankan state or Sri Lankan government has uh, gone ahead with uh, commemorating and celebrating it as a victory day it as a victory day and the war heroes they were looking at the 
soldiers as the war hero so definitely there are two contrast things which have been taking up incessant selling okay uh, sri hari uh, is asking incessant incessant means <coughs> non stop incessant means non stop completely i mean even though i said even though it is a no fire zone even though the it was a no fire zone even though it was a no fire zone which was uh, by the un which i said in the final uh, final phase they have gone ahead with the incessant shelling shelling in the sense what is a bombing by uh, it could be by uh, uh, directly going ahead with uh, attacking it could be in regards to the missiles by missiles attacking them by missiles or by gunning down gunning them down by missiles or gunning down incessant means what do you say non stop i mean uh, with without any any stop or going ahead with complete completely non stop so incessant why because even though it was no fire zone no fire zone means what it is the civilians will be staying there please do understand civilians will be staying there not the ltts but the sri lankan government or the sri lankan army have incessantly shelled fired on the no fire zone actually no fire zone they should not be firing on that zone because there are civilians not the tamilians so when there are civilians so definitely scores of people have died sri hari did you get the point when I mean, did you understand the meaning of incessant or mercilessly it is non stop or you can take it as as mercilessly also mercilessly mercilessly incessantly uh, what is a non stop they have gone ahead with the shelling theory i think you got the point so definitely i feel this uh, entire uh, the analysis of the newspaper was very important for you was knowledgeable was informative for prelims especially from the prelims point of view and then uh, i hope it was a very good session for you also which could be very very useful for the prelims point of view and then please do like the video share the video and then subscribe the video while you are uh, watching the let's crack upsc cac english and then do subscribe uh, for 24 months do subscribe for 24 months because and while subscribing use my code sbt10 while subscribing the let's crack upsc cac english for 24 months do use my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala 10 where you will get 10% discount and the benefit you are here you will get is you will be paying the amount only for the 13 months you will be paying the amount only for the 13 months but you will get the entire 24 month subscription so do take the advantage uh do take the advantage of the an academy providing you 24 month subscription with only 13 months of the fees or the amount and then if you haven't still subscribed do subscribe using my code sbt10 <clears throat> and then in regards to if you haven't still downloaded if you haven't downloaded the unacademy learners app please go ahead with downloading the unacademy learners app and then be part of the unite unacademy special classes unacademy special classes and then further make sure that you can also when you are part of the unacademy special classes you can also go ahead with the lectures of mine and also all the other educators also all the other educators lectures also you can go ahead so make sure that you do not forget to download the unacademy learners app and then be part of the unacademy special classes and then in regards to subscription do subscribe for the 24 month subscription and do not forget to use my code sbt10 that is sandeep bhushan tumala 10 which very you will get 10% on the 24 month subscription what i'm saying is what is very important is the opportunity provided by the an academy towards the civil servant aspirant is that you will be paying only for the amount of 13 months for the entire 24 months do take the advantage and uh, malvika says thank you okay sir sir this is amazing okay first time joined in this session thank you sir hari 
and these sessions i will have this continuous sessions from morning 7:30 am i will have it daily newspaper i will have this daily newspaper 7:30 am and also again 10:15 i will have the 10:15 am i will go ahead with the trending editorials trending analysis of the analysis of the trending editorials and articles i will go ahead and then really amazing sessions sir thank you very much thanks for your giving us lot of knowledge thank you sir thus we have this session every day yeah daily daily uh, uh, sri hari it is daily 7:30 am daily 7:30 am you will have daily 7:30 am and thank you all thank you all and definitely you will be benefited by my lectures you will be certainly benefited by my lecture in regards to films and also in regards to the uh, a, a better and thorough comprehensive understanding about the topic you will definitely i i i i, I will definitely uh, go ahead with this saying and do not forget to subscribe the let's crack upsc cs english for 24 months and my code sbt 10 sandeep bhushan tumala 10 thank you all see you again at 10:15 am bye uh for the analysis of the trending editorials and uh, articles thank you very much thank you all